Good morning, everyone out there in Turtle Land. This is Jordan Gray, Communication and Outreach Coordinator with the Turtle Survival Alliance. And I want to welcome you to another webinar and another wonderful Thursday morning. I can't wait for you uh, to answer your all's questions. Uh, this week, we are starting with a brand new webinar series, and it is called TSA Around the World. Thank you all who have um, previously engaged in our webinars, uh, our Turtles 101 to 401 series, and our um, World Turtle Day webinar, as well as our 10 Ways That You Can Help Turtles webinar. So thank you very much. So in this new webinar series, I'm gonna take you around the world so that you can see how the Turtle Survival Alliance makes a positive impact for 117 species and subspecies of turtle around the world. Nearly one third of the species of turtles here on earth. All right, think I'm gonna look over. Thank you all for coming in. Lucas, hey Lucas. Crystal, hey, good to see you Crystal. We have Anna on. We have Destiny coming in from Ohio, so thank you all very much. Uh, this is exciting. I'm really excited for this webinar series because I love sharing what our range country programs do on behalf of the tortoises and freshwater turtles that live in those countries. Um, it, it's what keeps me going to work every day. Um, now, I also get a paycheck, and that's really nice, uh, and I am fortunate enough uh, to um, be a professional turtle conservationist and work for this incredible organization, the uh, most uh, comprehensive and largest collaborative uh, turtle and tortoise conservation organization in the world. So um, this uh, webinar series is basically designed uh, to culminate with our 18th annual symposium on the conservation and biology of tortoises and freshwater turtles, a virtual symposium. So for many of you who have attended our uh, symposiums in the past, as you know, they are an in-person destination experience taking places, uh, excuse me, taking place in places like Arizona, Florida, uh, Missouri, uh, South Carolina, and Texas, uh, just to name some. Uh, this year, however, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we decided that putting uh, turtle conservationists, who are the bedrock of turtle conservation, um, all together in one place uh, would not be the safest way uh, for us to responsibly um, organize this event. So instead, we are bringing it to the world. This will truly be a worldwide symposium this year. And we're actually really excited about it because we're going to be able to engage people who have never been or maybe uh, don't get those opportunities even in the future to come uh, uh, stateside or wherever we may have a symposium in the future um, to become involved. And this is going to be really great. It's going to be over the course of eight weeks from uh, Thursday, uh, August 6th to Thursday, September 24th. We plan to have uh, up to eight presentations per day. Uh, these are going to be the creme de la creme of turtle conservation research, captive husbandry, um, and uh, uh, conservation education topics. And I, uh, I can't wait for you all to be able to join. So again, uh, this webinar series will culminate as the 18th annual symposium on the conservation biology of tortoises and freshwater turtles commences live on our YouTube channel and on our Zoom webinar platform. Now, what I do want to say is because uh, we are opening this up to a worldwide gathering, um, this is your chance to, uh, to show the world 
your work on behalf of turtles. Abstracts for oral and poster presentations are due on the 8th of June, which is a Monday. So if you're procrastinating, that gives you the weekend uh, to work on that um, presentation uh, abstract and send it in to us. Uh, we're so excited. We've already gotten numerous abstracts in, and so far the topics look fantastic. It's going to be something you all are really going to enjoy. Uh, looking over here, thanks a lot for all these new people tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, so if you want to submit your abstract for consideration, please go to our website, turtlesurvival.org, go to the 2020 symposium button, and then scroll down and click on call for presentations. There you will be able to find uh, the, um, the abstract guidelines as well as a sample abstract, and then click the link of where to submit your abstract. So we're very much looking forward to reading about and seeing your work during August and September. All right, so uh, today we are talking about North America and the Turtle Survival Alliance's primary conservation program in North America is the North American Freshwater Turtle Research Group. Uh, this is a group of which I am one of many leaders of. Um, I'm very passionate about this group, as are everyone who is involved. Uh, this is an incredible group doing amazing things on behalf of uh, freshwater turtles that are native to the United States of America and Canada. Um, and we are actually expanding down into Central America. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, so just to give you some origins about the North American Freshwater Tur Turtle Research Group, or the uh, nicely drawn out acronym TSA NAFTERG, as we call it. Um, so it is a one of a kind professional and citizen science research initiative. And that's what makes this so cool. Um, it is led by professional scientists and conservationists, but it is really, really made by you, our volunteer. Uh, we have had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of volunteers over the year. Uh, we have a very, very active uh, core group of people. Uh, uh, and then, uh, which brings in more uh, research associates, which brings in students and everyday citizen science volunteers. So it's an incredible group to get involved with. This is a group that you, whether you live in the United States, Canada or abroad, can get involved in. Um, we, would, we have actually had people travel internationally uh, to get involved. So uh, at, towards the end of this presentation, I will tell you exactly how you can get involved and become part of this one-of-a-kind research initiative. All right, so uh, this group was initiated in 1999 as the Central Florida Turtle Research Group. Um, it was initially a freshwater a turtle assemblage study of Wakaiwa and Rock Springs in uh, central, north central Florida. And it was founded by Dr. J. Brian Haig, who at the time was with Penn State University, Nittany Lion Pride, um, and then also Dr. Brian Butterfield of Freed Hardman University in Tennessee. Um, uh, basically, the focus of their research was to look at uh, long-term uh, population uh, demographics and dynamics through a capture-recapture effort. So what does that mean? What is a capture-recapture, or as uh, many of you might know, mark recapture? Uh, so what this is, is you capture the turtles, uh, you then uh, mark them uh, and or provide pit tags, passive integrated transponders, uh, of which you insert uh, beneath the turtle's skin, and then you release the turtle right back into the environment from which it, it came. 
And then you go out and you try to catch these animals again. Now for a, a mark recapture effort to really get uh, good quantitative and qualitative data, you need to do this over a long period of time. And simply put, it's because turtles are long lived animals. Um, it's really hard to see trends in turtle populations uh, over a short period of time. Um, so as I said, this began in 1999 and it is now 2020. So this program uh, has been now going on for 21 years as of this March. Um, it, that's an incredible amount of time. There are research initiatives by um, uh, biologists out there here in the United States who have a longer duration than that, but this definitely is one of the longest uh, currently running programs on behalf of uh, freshwater turtles. Um, all right, so going on through its history, uh, the Central Florida Turtle Research Group uh, then became the North American Freshwater Turtle Research Group as, it's, uh, as it expanded from those two current, for, excuse me, from those two initial spring sites. Uh, it was incorporated into the Turtle Survival Alliance as a range country program in 2012. And now it is uh, led by um, still Dr. J. Brian Hegg, who is now with Peninsula College in Washington State, as well as Eric Muncher, who is employed by SWCA Environmental Consultants in Houston, Texas. And as a TSA Range Country Program, um, the advisor for this program is our Chief Operating Officer, Andrew Wald, uh, who is of course, heavily involved with this research initiative. And if you look at the pictures there, uh, in the upper left-hand corner, we have Eric. To his right, we have Dr. J. Brian Haig. And then below, that is Andrew Wald. All of them, of course, showing their love and passion for turtles. Um, so from that point, uh, the work of the Central Florida Research Group continued uh, to, uh, to continue providing long-term capture recapture population studies, primarily focused on common species. Now, um, we call these species common uh, because they are fairly ubiquitous in the environments in which they reside. For instance, in the spring systems in Florida, uh, loggerhead musk turtles, Sternotherus minor minor, um, peninsula cooters, uh, Pseudemys floridana peninsularis, uh, etc. Those are what we consider common species. But what's always important to remember is that oftentimes common species are overlooked. And so that is th the baseline of this group is get quantitative and qualitative data on these quote unquote common species uh, because they are just as important uh, to the environment in terms of their ecological role as our rarer species of turtles and tortoises. Um, the other thing to remember is just because we consider something a common species does not mean it will be common in the future. We all have seen this time and time again with various animal species, whether it be uh, the very notable ones of the passenger pigeon and uh, American bison, uh, both of those whose populations um, were in the uh, tens of millions. Um, and now uh, passenger pigeons are of course extinct while the American bison is uh, numbers only uh, a few thousand individuals uh, residing in parks in the wild. Um, so that is uh, uh, the core study of the group. Now, I'm gonna get to expansion in a minute and we have started to bring in more quote unquote uncommon or uh, species of special concern vulner uh, or vulnerable species. Uh, so really quick, those initial research sites uh, of 
a TSA NAFTR in 2012. We're at Blue Springs uh, State Park, Fanning Springs State Park, Manatee Springs State Park, Peacock Springs State Park, Wakaiwa Springs State Park, all of those in Florida, and then Comal Springs in Texas. As you can see, the state park system of Florida is uh, very involved in this, and uh, they provide this opportunity uh, for us to be able to engage in this um, in this uh, research. So again, looking at all the people chiming in and saying hi, it's a pleasure to see you all. Thank you very much for joining. All right, so how do we do this? And this is the really cool thing, and this is the part that's gonna make people want to get involved. It's made people get involved for the last 21 years. But uh, the primary methods of capture for these animals are snorkeling, hand capture, and trapping, with uh, snorkeling being actually the primary method of capture for most of the spe species we work with. Take a look at that picture on your left. That is Dr. J. Brian Haig in all of his snorkeling glory. He's uh, holding a cooter and two musk turtles there in his hand. And that's basically how we do it. Uh, this group works in spring systems uh, in the United States uh, that uh, exhibit crystal clear or thereabouts uh, water. And so we are actually able to snorkel uh, and capture these turtles by hand. It's really, really fun, uh, but it also is a, actually a really good way to be able to quantify turtle populations in these areas. Um, uh, next, what happens when we get turtles? Okay, uh, just remember this is a research initiative, so we are not capturing turtles uh, for pets. We are not capturing them to hold them. Uh, we are not uh, uh, taking them to some other place and re-releasing them. We are doing a long-term mark recapture or capture recapture study. So all the turtles are measured, they're weighed, they're pit tagged. Again, if you're just joining uh, or didn't hear what I said about a pit tag. It is a passive integrated transponder. It's basically the size of a grain of rice and it is inserted uh, uh, carefully uh, in underneath the skin of the turtle. And depending on the size and species of the turtle uh, um, predicates the placement of that tag under the skin. Uh, they are also hard marked. This means that we put little tiny notches um, along the marginal scoots. And uh, if you're new to turtles, uh, the marginal scoots are the scoots that go around the edge of the shell. Hey, wait a minute. Why don't I just demonstrate really quick? So I have a wonderful turtle right here, an absolutely gorgeous turtle. Okay, this is a male ornate box turtle, Terrapini ornata ornata. Um, and so these are the marginal scoots, the, the, the uh, plates that go along the outer rim of the top shell. Now, let's flip it over. Let's look at the plastron just a moment. So uh, for some of these species, we have marked so many turtles that we've also had to start including marks on the scoots of the plastron, uh, some of them denoting turtles uh, well into the thousands. Um, so that is a general way. I'll, I'll give a really quick up close because this is an absolutely gorgeous animal. Again, this is an ornate box turtle. It is a male. Um, as you can see on this specimen, males of this species typically exhibit a green, a greenish blue or greenish yellow head. Uh, and this one uh, in particular has a very nice lime green head. All right, so um, so we mark uh, the edges of the shell. Um, and what that does is that provides us an instantaneous um, uh, depiction of a turtle we have captured before. Um, if we were to go uh, through each turtle initially, 
uh, and, and scan them for their pit tag, our processing would take longer. Again, processing is this whole uh, measuring, weighing, pit tagging, and, and marking, and of course, recording all that data. Uh, imagine some, on some days we will catch well over 600 turtles. Um, so processing can go well into the night. I can recall uh, times when uh, uh, headlamps had to be set up, lanterns, even uh, the lights of cars running because we would be working out there in the field processing hundreds and hundreds of turtles uh, till uh, 2 a.m. even at night. Um, thank you, uh, Rowan and Destiny. He, he is an absolutely gorgeous animal. Uh, he's very vain. Uh, he knows he's good looking. So, uh, uh, don't, don't try to blow up his little lime green head there too much. Um, but then lastly, these turtles are all released. They are released at their point of capture. And, uh, we always try to actually release the individual turtle from the segment of spring river, uh, bayou, uh, lake, et cetera, in which it came from because these turtles do typically uh, have a uh, home range. Uh, however, that home range is dynamic uh, as these turtles will travel uh, in search of uh, foraging areas, hiding, uh, mates, or of course with females to go nest. Um, as you can see from the middle of the picture, Processing is always a uh, group activity. So for those of you who want to volunteer, uh, if you don't want to snorkel and you don't want to canoe, Lord knows I don't want to canoe. Uh, anybody from TSA will tell you about how much I whine uh, when I'm on a canoe. Uh, there are great opportunities to not only help process the turtles, but if you see, we actually set it up so that we can provide outreach, educational outreach to park goers. Uh, as many of the sites are at state parks, there is a lot of uh, humans trafficking the park, whether it's to use the water or go hiking or picnic, and they uh, uh, see what we're doing and become interested. So this is a great opportunity if you are an education specialist to get involved and provide hands-on, on-the-spot education right there with a conservation project. Uh, and then over on the right, you'll see trapping. So trapping is our primary method that we use in Texas for alligator snapping turtles, probably uh, one of the most intriguing turtles in the world. Uh, for some, they elicit fear. For others, uh, uh, you know, it's, they believe it's a magnificent animal. I know I believe it's a magnificent animal. Uh, either way, this species tends to ignite some sort of reaction. Really quick, my mouth is getting dry, so don't worry for all you who have watched my webinars before. I am back with my Coke Zero. Don't worry, right there. Okay. And then each sample site is sampled two to four times annually for our mark recapture, uh, but for alligator snapping turtles, we sample this monthly. And if I'm looking over in my comments, I see that Rachel Adams of the Houston Zoo is watching uh, the webinar this morning. Um, good morning, Rachel. I miss you. Um, Rachel is one of the field technicians for our Western alligator snapping turtle, mac um, macro, uh, uh, whatever it is, um, macro Kelly's. I can't believe I did that. Brain fart. Macro Kelly's Taminkii uh, in the Houston, Texas area. So it's good to see our NAFTR uh, field technicians and volunteers right here on the webinar this morning. All right, next, let's talk about the positive impact of this group. Because again, through this whole webinar series, we're going to be talking about the positive impacts of these TSA range country programs. So number one, TSA NAFTRG makes a positive scientific contribution for 30 species and subspecies of freshwater turtle. Uh, that is just about one third of the turtle taxa 
um, or species and subspecies of turtle that reside in the United States. So we do have a relatively large footprint when it comes to the number of species and subspecies we work with. All right, Rowan says, I had a lot of fun working with Nat Derg. Absolutely you did, and uh, that's, that's great to hear. Uh, we, we love to get feedback from those who have volunteered. Uh, many people have been volunteering for years and years. This is something that people just keep coming back to. Uh, just to give everybody watching a, a little bit in, of an idea, uh, during these sampling trips, we normally uh, get campsites at these state parks. You know, we set up tents. You got to have your fire, your s'mores, maybe a little bit of cerveza. Um, and we really make it just a really great, fun communal experience. So Rowan, I'm really glad that you have gotten to be involved and hopefully you have or will continue to come back. All right, next. TSA NAFTR creates a positive research opportunity for hundreds of volunteers. I've already stated this. This is a one of a kind research opportunity. We take in new volunteers all the time, every sample, every year. Um, I promise you, every single sample, uh, we have new volunteers. So uh, we're just really, really creating a community of turtle lovers here in North America. All right, next, so a positive impact. Uh, as far as our scientific contribution, TSA NAFTA has published 15 peer-reviewed journal articles and 30 natural history or geographic notes for species. So uh, there are opportunities, especially for those, uh, and this is my next bullet point, uh, who are either undergraduates or graduate students, whether that be someone going for their master's uh, or their doctoral degrees to get involved. We have had uh, both undergraduates and um, graduate students uh, become involved with our work and publish their work with us um, in peer-reviewed scientific journals. If you look on the far right there, that's, uh, that's uh, Maddie Morrison. And Maddie is now at the University of New England in Maine where we're getting her involved in uh, Blandings and Spotted Turtle research up in Maine. But she started volunteering with us at a young age um, so young actually that uh, she had to have a parent guardian there with her because in uh, some of our spring sites, uh, there are rules instituted by the state parks as to the age limit of those who join us being able to go beyond the boundaries of the public swimming area. Either way, Maddie is so passionate about turtle conservation and this research group and if you can imagine, she already had her first peer-reviewed um, scientific journal article published at the age of 19. Uh, she has since published another paper uh, based on her work with NAFTERG. So again, amazing opportunity for any of you who are involved with undergraduates to get undergraduates involved with this research. Uh, if you look on the far left of your screen there, you will see Tabitha, uh, Hootman. And uh, Tabitha it just completed her master's degree uh, with Jacksonville University. And she did hers on the home range and movements of the Florida red bellied and peninsula cooters of uh, Wakaiwa Rock Springs and the Wakiwa River. Um, so that is her, by the way, don't, don't worry, she is not hurting that turtle. That is a really cool apparatus used to restrain the turtle in uh, uh, the um, least stressful manner uh, possible so that she can attach radio transmitters to be able to perform her research. And in the middle, there's our uh, a recent publication of ours in Urban Naturalist on our work uh, on behalf of Western alligator snapping turtles in Houston, Texas. All right, so a decade of expansion. NAFTRG has um, greatly expanded its reach 
um, in the last decade, especially since becoming one of TSA's range country programs. Uh, so let's look at that expansion. So in Florida, uh, we work in 10 freshwater spring sites, as well as one brackish water site where we are currently doing a recapture effort for ornate diamondback terrapins, Malaclemys terrapin macrospilota. And uh, those terrapins uh, were uh, found uh, after a hurricane washed ashore. Uh, there was about uh, 80 of them and they were uh, rehabilitated by Owl's Nest Sanctuary outside Tampa and then released at an undisclosed location. And currently Brett Bartek is leading up the uh, recapture effort for those terrapins. Um, in Texas, uh, we work in three spring, lake, river, and bayou sites. In Pennsylvania, two freshwater stream sites. In New Jersey, one freshwater river site. In ten Tennessee, one freshwater lake. Uh, in Ontario, we now have an affiliated program um, uh, through Marc Dupuy Desolmo, uh, or as we call him, Marc DD or Marc D squared. Uh, for those of you who were on the webinar last week, I was having some good uh, banter with Marc on the chat. Uh, he told me ahead of time he wouldn't be able to join in. I'm sure he would have liked to uh, describe what he's doing up there in Ontario. Uh, so now we have expanded uh, to the Great White North above the United States. Our, uh, our Canadian friends uh, do a lot of amazing turtle work. Uh, people oftentimes don't equate turtles with Canada, but let me tell you, uh, especially in the province, Ontario, there's a lot of great work as well as uh, Quebec, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, um, and even uh, over in the Western provinces. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we are expanding to Belize. Um, that, was, uh, that expansion was to take place next month, so June 2020. However, in light of the pandemic, we have had to push back the commencement of that opportunity. And that will be at the Belize Foundation for Research and Environmental Education's grounds deep in the, uh, the jungle of Belize. So um, at some point, if you're able to get involved with that, uh, hopefully you are very uh, well versed in taming jaguars. All right, so this is just a cool infographic. Oh uh, yeah, I love it. I just called my own thing cool, but either way, whatever, I think it's cool. This is an infographic that just gives you an idea of where we work um, and we are continuing to expand. Um, uh, there are other states that uh, are on our radar for expansion. Uh, this is also an opportunity if you are interested in helping us expand TSA NAFTRG, especially some westward expansion, because as you can see, the Midwestern uh, United States is uh, sparse when it comes to our active involvement. Uh, however, there is still a lot of research and conservation efforts going on there, um, uh, primarily through universities and some other uh, nonprofit groups. Uh, but please email me uh, at jgray at turtlesurvival.org uh, and we can discuss uh, a possible expansion of our NAFTA group. Again, we have some sites that we're thinking of, but we would love to hear your ideas. Again, we're looking for opportunities where there is a good assemblage of freshwater uh, turtle types and an area in which we can provide long-term population uh, monitoring of those animals. All right, so let me uh, dig into some specifics. I'm not gonna go to all those sites down there uh, because uh, I, I really just want to get to where our primary effort is uh, uh, regarding volunteers, uh, because this is really a volunteer-based group. So we're gonna start here in the Sunshine State. This is the great state of Florida. Um, 
And as you can see, we work in numerous sites in Florida. Uh, luckily, uh, there is this wonderful um, thing called the Floridian Aquifer, um, which is a limestone-based aquifer underneath much of the state. Um, and this holds a, a vast amount of fresh water. Um, and so uh, every single day at, I believe it's well over 200, if not more spring sites throughout Florida, millions of gallons of uh, spring water are coming up to the surface from uh, this Floridian aquifer. So uh, it provides us a really good opportunity to perform this snorkeling work and a little bit of trapping uh, in these areas. So as you can see, uh, Lafayette Blue, Troy, Fanning, Manatee, Wikiwachi, Peacock, Ichituckney, Volusia Blue, uh, Rock, and Wakaiwa Springs are all uh, under research by our group, as well as the undisclosed site of the ornate diamondback terrapins that I just referred to. All right, so uh, Sumiakui says, and it's good to see you back there, Sumiakui. Uh, how come no activity in South Carolina where TSA is headquartered? So that's a really good question. Um, so we are actually looking at programs uh, in South Carolina. Uh, now, we won't be able to uh, perform those programs as we have the others uh, because there uh, are really no uh, water bodies in South Carolina where um, visibility is good enough to perform this type of research uh, or even where uh, with regards to human safety, uh, it might be safe enough to pro uh, pr provide this kind of research. However, um, there's a very good chance that we will expand to spotted turtle Clemmie's gutata research in South Carolina, um, and we are looking at other taxa as well. Um, we've been very, very involved in recent legislature to protect turtles in South Carolina, especially the eastern box turtle, Terrapini Carolina Carolina, uh, as South Carolina is a hotbed for um, uh, smuggling and poaching activity of the state's native uh, turtles. All right, Rachel says, that's awesome. Y'all are ex expanding even more. Yes, so we are expanding and uh, I've already gone out and looked at another site. I won't tell you where though, uh, but let me tell you uh, if this site comes to fruition, uh, we've talked about it now, honestly, for a couple of years, but we do have a lot of sites and we need to make sure that all of those current uh, projects are prioritized before, of course, we can expand. But let me tell you, uh, if this next site ever gets going, it is going to be a, a destination site and one I'll bet you will want to get involved in, especially for those living west of the Mississippi. All right. So. In Florida, uh, we, uh, we work with 11 species and subspecies of freshwater turtle. Uh, we ha have captured, marked, and released uh, more than 8,000 turtles. Um, and we have over 18,000 total captures in Florida. So we have a very, very large data set. As you can imagine, um, that's a lot of uh, pit tags that have been inserted. And so at many of those springs, should you ever go and see a turtle, take a close look because it may be one of ours under study. Um, and then lastly, there's a lot of organizations uh, that are involved uh, with this work. I've provided a special thanks to them because uh, the Turtle Survival Alliance truly is that. It's an alliance. Uh, we cannot do this work alone. And so we really appreciate all of those organizations uh, that really make this work happen, including you, our volunteer and our supporter. All right, so I just wanna show you a quick, um, a quick uh, slide of everybody getting involved. Again, uh, the people, the volunteers are what make this work. They also make it fun. 
uh, we have a lot of fun on these trips. Um, and, and so if you want to have fun, if you want to make a positive impact for turtles, please support this group, get involved with this group. I'll show you how, uh, uh shortly. Uh, but this again, it just shows some of the, uh, uh, 11 species and subspecies of turtle that we work with in Florida and the people that help make it happen. Let me see. So Destiny says, I'll be moving to Tampa, Florida this coming summer. How easy challenging is it to get involved in volunteering and research in the nearby area? Uh, Destiny, it's actually uh, fairly easy. Um, just uh, give me an email at jgray at turtlesurvival.org uh, to, uh, to give me an idea of when you're going to move, when you're going to start getting involved and I will put you in touch with our program leaders there in Florida. Our program leaders that we love ever so much. All right, so next let's go to Texas. Everything is bigger in Texas, as you can see by that giant western alligator snapping turtle head rising above the state. Um, so we work with nine species and subspecies of freshwater turtle in Texas. Um, of those nine, uh, we have already captured, marked, and released over 5,000 turtles uh, with a total of over 8,000 captures. So again, um, a, a large data set is being compiled in Texas, and that work began in 2012. Um, let me see. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So Kelly says, agree. Super easy. They post samplings all over Central Florida. So yes, yeah, so uh, on our website, and again, I'm going to show you how to get there in a minute. We uh, we uh, give a list of each year's samplings. Uh, some of those are uh, predetermined before the year begins. Others become available um, uh, as the uh, parks allow us to, especially this year with the pandemic. So. All of our research was put on hold this year. We have not been able to uh, commence any of our annual uh, samplings, except for our work with alligator snapping turtles in Houston, Texas. Uh, but that is because that is a very small group of, uh, of core volunteers. Uh, and then, of course, talking about alligator snapping turtles, uh, this is a, a, an amazing project. Rachel, who is over there on our comments and watching, can tell you uh, this is so cool. I, I worked with this program for uh, since its inception, and uh, so far in a relatively small area, uh, we have um, captured, uh, marked, and released 84 unique alligator snapping turtles. Uh, it's, you know, this is a dinosaur of a species. Uh, they're, they're large, they're prehistoric looking. Uh, they of course have those menacing jaws, but uh, it's one of the best turtles one can ever work with in their lifetime. So for all those who have ever worked with alligator snapping turtles, I know you can say it has made a tremendous impact on your life. Um, Again, in Texas, there are many that we would like to thank. So there's a special thanks to uh, different organizations, governmental agencies, and um, uh, supporting uh, companies. So thank you very much to all those who have made this work in Texas possible. Um, so we work in Austin, we work in New Braunfels, and we work in Houston. Um, so if you live in Texas or are interested in traveling to Texas, uh, the programs in Austin and New Braunfels uh, will be really fun for you to get involved with. I can tell you after living in Texas for six years and being involved in that research there, uh, now that I live back on the East Coast, I miss it all the time. I mean, we just have such a fun time. Uh, the group is just like an extended family. Uh, it, it's not just full of laughter, uh, excuse me, turtle catching uh, and turtle processing and turtle research, but it, it's also a lot of laughter, going out to dinners with each other, um, going and doing other activities nearby. So uh, a really cool, you know, family unit to get involved with. And again, here is... Oh, 
There we go. There is just a slide showing you uh, some of the turtles and the people that make this Texas research possible. Now, I know most of you might really quickly want to look in the upper right hand corner. That is a very, very large turtle. Uh, we have nicknamed him El uh, Gigante. Um, he is a, a male Western alligator snapping turtle who is 132 pounds. Um, there is a young uh, 10 pound alligator snapping turtle placed upon his back just for size reference. And then you can see our research technician, Chris Drake squatted behind them. Uh, this photo actually went um, uh, fairly viral on social media, uh, and you can see why. I mean, this is just an incredible turtle, um, and this is just one of, again, 84 unique alligator snapping turtles that we have captured so far in this project, um, and we plan to uh, continue this work for at least another seven years, uh, hopefully more, uh, in this uh, population of alligator snapping turtles. Uh, but again, look around the, uh, in Texas, uh, we, we've had volunteers as young as six, um, of course, with a, an adult guardian present. Um, and so this is a really good place for those of you who uh, do have uh, children, whether it's in elementary or middle or high school or college, uh, to get involved with this program. And some of the opportunities are, uh, for NAFTA are available in Texas, depending on the age group, that they might not be in some of our other states. All right, next, let's go to Pennsylvania and talk about a turtle that is beloved around the world. But first, let me take a delicious sip of my Coke Zero. Woo, okay. Destiny says, I worked with a beautiful male alligator snapper at the Columbus Zoo. Definitely a very powerful animal and full of spunk. You are righter than rain about that. They are very powerful animals. Uh, they are um, pugnacious, um, but you know they are majestic and beautiful as well. And something, a, a species that I hope all people uh, would revere. All right, so in Pennsylvania, uh, this is a uh, neat collaboration with our good friends at the Turtle Room, and this is for the North American Wood Turtle. Uh, this is a uh, species that is uh, threatened, if not endangered, throughout most of its range. It is protected at the state level in every state of the United States in which it is found, and it is protected at the federal level in Canada. Excuse me. This is also a turtle uh, that can live in very, very cold climates. They can be found in uh, New Brunswick. They can be found in Nova Scotia, uh, uh, up in Quebec, along the St. Lawrence River. Um, so a very cold, cold hardy turtle indeed. Uh, I know I personally, not, not no offense to anybody who lives in Quebec, uh, I hear it's beautiful, uh, but personally, I love the South, okay? I'm a warm, I am warm-blooded, uh, and I love, I love the heat. So uh, I would love to visit Quebec or Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and look for tur wood turtles, um, but I'm going to stay right here in the sunny South. All right, so, um, so this project uh, we started in 2016. Um, uh, the beginnings of it were, were very, very memorable. Um, Steve Enders uh, and Anthony Pierleone of the Turtle Room, and then Eric Muncher and myself of Turtle Survival Alliance, we went scouting uh, through the mountains and valleys of Pennsylvania looking for uh, some opportune sites in which to provide long-term uh, research on this species. Uh, that ended up being uh, a very grueling uh, yet comical day. Um, we actually ended up hiking uh, 20 miles that day up and down uh, mountains. Um, I can remember going all the way from the bottom of a mountain uh, to its crest. Um, it was 
uh, you know, after a full day of looking for turtles. So a grueling experience. Um, and then it became rather comical and a, uh, a story that we definitely won't forget because Anthony, who, by the way, if you don't know Anthony, uh, he's about the size of the mountain from Game of Thrones. He's one of the largest people you'll ever see, but uh, as, as sweeter than candy, you know, he's a big teddy bear that Anthony Pierleone. Uh, but he, he, he drives a rather small car for his size. Um, and, uh, and so the four of us packed into his car, uh, and we were going up a steep, uh, uh, gravel mountain road to get to a site to survey. And there were some ruts in the road caused by rainfall. And, uh, those ruts had exposed some of the rock underneath and Anthony ended up hitting those rocks a little bit too big, uh, a small car filled with full, uh, four full-grown men, uh, and then there's Anthony, who uh, accounts for two or three men. Um, but the weight of the car caused it to drop so low that Anthony's um, uh, uh, oil tank got uh, was cracked by a rock. He then had oil spilling out onto this uh, mountain roadside, which, by the way, is not traversed by anybody at all. It is in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so Anthony had to stay up and wait with his car until a tro tow truck got there uh, a couple hours later while Steve, uh, Eric, and I went down into the valley to search for wood turtles. And we did find wood turtles. We found a lot of uh, spotted salamander egg casings and wood frog uh, egg masses. Uh, so it was a really cool and fun experience. Uh, either way, so uh, we did uh, settle on two sites. Um, at the one uh, initial site, uh, which will remain undisclosed um, to protect uh, the whereabouts of this species, uh, we have 29 turtles captured, marked, and released. Uh, the other site uh, we have decided uh, to give up as far as a research endeavor. Uh, because honestly, the hydrology of that large creek, um, they call it a creek. Uh, anywhere else you would call it a river because that's what it is, really. Um, it, it, it's deep. It, it takes in all the runoff from the smaller tributaries. And it's rather difficult to survey for North American wood turtles. So uh, as of uh, March 2020, or maybe it was April, either way, um, we, uh, we added a new site in, uh, Southern Pennsylvania, uh, in which, uh, wood turtle surveys will commence this fall. Um, so again, this is a great, uh, uh, effort and, um, you know, big thanks to the turtle room. And of course the uh, Pennsylvania state agencies that make this happen, uh, because it's, it's, again, it's a, a meaningful project for a species that is not only declining, uh, but it is very uh, much loved around the world. And of course, you probably want to see some North American wood turtles. So here are some pictures of North American wood turtles, their habitat, and of course, the researchers that make all this possible. So uh, we, t we typically survey for this species uh, three times uh, per biological season. Um, and because this species is um, obligated to brew mating or hibernating in aquatic habitats, um, uh, our surveys are most intense uh, during their obligatory uh, phase of their annual natural history. All right, next. How do I get involved? I know it's the question I've been, uh, you all have been wondering. It's a topic I've been uh, stating all along is how do you get involved? Okay, number one, go to turtlesurvival.org. It's just that easy. It's a website. Um, go to the tab, get involved, uh, uh, and then toggle down to volunteer North America. And that will take you to our North American Freshwater Turtle Research Group specific page. Uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, it will give a list of dates uh, for 2020. 
And uh, again, many of those dates we have had to cancel due to, the, due to the pandemic, but we hope sometime this summer we will be able to resume those opportunities. And what a great way for you to end your self-quarantining and social distancing uh, at some point than getting involved with group turtle conservation. Um, you can also send me an email directly, jgray at turtlesurvival.org. I love to hear from you all. And also, uh, truth be told, if you go to Volunteer North America and click on the link to volunteer, it's just going to send you to email me anyway. So let's make it easy, right? Um, next, uh, join, the, uh, join and follow the North American Freshwater Turtle Research Group on Facebook. Uh, this is a separate Facebook group from our um, uh, Turtle Survival Alliance Facebook page. Of course, follow our Turtle Survival Alliance Facebook page and our other social media as well, because we, we update our page uh, about three to four times daily. Uh, and so you don't want to miss out on a thing. Uh, again, uh, this is the greatest organization in the world for uh, tortoise and freshwater turtle uh, conservation and collaborative uh, initiatives. So don't miss out on a thing. Kind of just reminded me of that Steven Tyler song, uh, but whatever. Um, and then, of course, you can support this work by becoming a TSA member. Now, of course, there uh, I, I keep saying, of course, I apologize. I shouldn't be because um, it's, of course, to me, but maybe new to you. So uh, when you become a uh, TSA NAFTRG volunteer, uh, one of the uh, requisites is that you become a TSA member. Uh, luckily for those who volunteer with the group, um, there are uh, uh, NAFTRG. Uh, membership discounts. Uh, if you're a student, there are student discounts. Or if you are volunteering from uh, some zoological or other um, organization, uh, a zoological institution um, or other organization, if your zoo has an organizational membership, um, then that will allow any of their staff members to come help us out. And we do regularly uh, get volunteers from the zoological uh, community. All right. So that concludes North America. Um, next week, I really hope you'll tune in because this is going to be a different webinar. Next week, we are heading down to Belize. And as you remember, uh, or may remember, Belize will be the site of our future NAFTR expansion for the freshwater turtle assemblage in the rivers and forested wetlands in and around the Belize Foundation for Research and Environmental Education. Well, at uh, Be Free, uh, the TSA and Be Free have what we call the Hickety uh, Conservation and Research Center. Uh, this is an incredible facility deep in the heart of the jungle. Uh, that is important uh, to uh, helping restore this critically endangered uh, turtle in Belize, which is considered to be the last stronghold of this turtle. Um, but it's not going to be a normal webinar, folks. We are going to be coming to you live from Belize. Now, a uh, little tear is dropping from my eye right now because uh, I will not be there. Uh, I'll still be on your screen, but uh, we will be live uh, with Heather Barrett, uh, Jacob Marlin, uh, Tom Pop, and Jaron Serrano um, from the Belize Foundation for Research and Edu uh, Environmental Education's facility. And they're actually going to tell you all about this program from in their own words and show you uh, some of our hickatees or Central American River turtles. By the way, the Hickatees just started hatching on World Turtle Day, so last Saturday, and I know they're going to want to show you some of those extremely cute hatchling Hickatees. So please tune in next week right here at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time as we take you um, uh, on a TSA Around the World journey to Belize. Uh, so with that, I want to say thank you, and then this is an opportunity 
if you have any questions about our work in North America. Um, but before anybody signs off, before I get to answer questions, please, uh, I would love, um, uh, I, I, I appreciate your all's support. Uh, especially those who I recognize tuning in every week. Thank you so much. I love talking about turtles. As If you look at the clock, as you know, uh, I can ramble on about turtles forever, and sometimes people have to stop me. But that is because I am passionate about uh, them and their conservation. And I hope you are too. Uh, my main message that I want to get out this second is that passion is contagious. Share what you love and others will love it too. Um, I'm, not, that is, I'm not just saying that, I have found that out through personal experience and I know many in the uh, wildlife and turtle conservation community can say the same thing. So if you have any questions, please, uh, I'll take a minute. And uh, if not, I wanna say thank you all very much and we will see you in Belize next Thursday. All right, time for a sip of my coffee. I, I didn't want a, a Dunkin' Donuts to feel left out in this. So yes, we do have Dunkin' Donuts in the South. It's not just a, uh, a New England thing or mid-Atlantic thing, okay? We, we have it in the South, although Krispy Kreme, oh, they, they do not like that. Rachel says, volunteer, hooray! It will be the most rewarding experience you will ever have. Uh, I, I know that working with alligator snapping turtles in Texas uh, has meant a lot to Rachel. She's told me so personally. Uh, I'm so happy uh, that Rachel has gotten involved with this work. Um, Rachel was a coworker of mine uh, at the Houston Zoo um, in Texas. And uh, she, she volunteered uh, with the North American Freshwater Turtle Research Group in Texas for several years uh, at our Comal Springs, uh, New Braunfels site. And now she's working uh, right near the zoo with alligator snapping turtles. So I'm really glad that Rachel has gotten involved, but it also just shows, uh, you know, how not only you can get involved, but that it will be a very, very rewarding experience for you. Diamondback Terrapins, who is my friend Travis Whitaker says, I really need to volunteer for this. Hey Travis, you really do. All right, I'll give it another minute because I know there is a time delay. It's a short time delay, but a time delay nonetheless. So take another delicious sip of my coffee. Because as they say, the world runs on Duncan. All right, Destiny says, I'm a recent graduate with a BS in conservation science. So I'm looking to begin a career in reptile conservation. If I were to volunteer with TSA, are there opportunities for potential career growth? Um, I will say yes. And simply put, I started with TSA NAFTRG um, and now I am thankfully employed by the Turtle Survival Alliance. Uh, but we have seen many um, NAFTRG volunteers go on to work professionally in wildlife conservation or go on to complete higher degrees, whether that be master's or doctoral degree. So there are definitely opportunities and uh, tr uh, just to be truthful, um, those uh, scientists that lead this group are very well connected uh, into the world of wildlife conservation as well as with universities and colleges. So it, it's a great networking opportunity uh, should you want to uh, pursue those endeavors as well. All right, Sumia Kui says, another great webinar. Hey, thanks. Question, is there any plan for the mud turtle in Mexico? I cannot find so much information about it online. Um, I'm not sure what species you're talking about. Maybe you want to drop me an email, jgray at turtlesurvival.org, uh, because there are numerous species of mud turtles in Mexico. Um, unless you're talking about the recent confiscation, uh, 
Uh, I'm, I'm going to take a, a wild guess there. Uh, so uh, in case you all didn't know, there was a recent confiscation at a Mexican airport of uh, more than 15,000 uh, native Mexican turtles. Um, just so you know, uh, uh, most of, if not all those turtles are protected by Mexican law for export. So uh, either something uh, nefarious is going on or um, they are uh, being smuggled out of the country. Either way, uh, those thousands of turtles um, are now being held uh, by the Mexican government. And uh, I've been in contact with turtle conservationists in Mexico regarding that situation. So um, uh, maybe through our TSA social media, we'll be able to provide an update. So again, uh, please stay tuned, follow the TSA on Facebook and our other uh, Instagram and Twitter platforms uh, in case we give an update regarding that confiscation soon. All right, uh, Rachel says, thank you for another awesome presentation, Jordan. Hey, thank you, Rachel. I miss you. I miss you. Uh, Sumi Akui says, sorry, I met the newly described mud turtle last year. Um, let, let's, let's chat on private message so we can get to the bottom of this. Um, uh, so that, uh, cause there's, there's numerous species and subspecies of, uh, a mud turtle in the country. Okay, uh, Shubham Sharma says, can captive breeding and farming for pet trade help in turtle conservation and stopping their falling wild population? Uh, Shubham, so I touched on this in a previous webinar and it's a very gray uh, situation uh, because we have seen uh, situations where a turtle becomes so heavily captive bred that uh, they are taken out of the wild less. I'm not going to say entirely, but less than uh, if they were be, uh, to be collected wholly from the wild. Uh, interestingly enough, however, uh, I can name numerous species who uh, proliferate in the pet trade. Uh, you know, some of the species I would name, you'd be like, that's the most common turtle I know of, and yet they're still collected in the wild and exported. Uh, so uh, to that end, um, uh, yes and no. Um, one of the things is, is that when, when something is a commodity and uh, people see that commodity, people want that commodity. Okay, so out of sight, out of mind. Um, and I, I, I wanna, I, I'm treading carefully here because I keep turtles. I have lots of friends who keep turtles. Um, I, I have lots of friends who are breeders of turtles. I have friends who breed turtles in large quantities, very large quantities. Um, and uh, for, for, for those of them who are my friends, I respect them as human beings. Um, but, uh, in some areas we may disagree. Uh, again, it's a very gray subject. So, um, all I can say is that I think everybody should just make sure they use their own discretion. Um, you know, I, I don't ever recommend taking a turtle from the wild and, uh, bringing it into captivity as a pet or sell it for personal profit. Uh, that is uh, one of the primary reasons uh, turtle populations are declining, uh, that next to habitat destruction. Uh, so, oh, thank goodness Peter Paul jumped in here to tell me what mud turtle um, uh, Sumi Akui was talking about. Uh, so really quick, I gotta jump back up. Gina Disseldorf, hey Gina, good to see you. She's tuning in from the Houston area. Uh, uh, she is, she says super presentation. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. And I'm glad that you are continuing to do, uh, what you do on behalf of turtles and wildlife. 
so Peter Paul says, uh, uh, Kino Sternen uh, Voti, um, or Votai, however you may pronounce your Latin. Um, so, uh, and Sumi Akui says, uh, Peter Paul, that's it. Uh, uh, Sumi, I, I, if you want to know about uh, uh, Kino Sternen uh, uh, Votai or Voti, um, Peter Paul, he's the man right there. Uh, he will, uh, I'm sure he would be able to give you a very good update on that species. Uh, Destiny is also saying, I am sure everyone is also wondering this, but how was COVID-19 impacted your outreach programs and research and how are you working around that during this time? So COVID-19 has greatly affected our research and our outreach programs. Um, we have not been able to do like for instance, for the North American Freshwater Turtle Research Group, we have not been able to perform the normal research that we do. So uh, we are chomping at the bit to get out in the field. Uh, as far as internationally, um, some of our programs were able to get a lot of work done prior to the COVID-19 uh, uh, social distancing and quarantine regulations, um, especially in regards to uh, large riverine turtles of the genus Batagir. Um, and so, uh, as well as Podoc in uh, South America. Um, yet, uh, a, lot of those in, uh, a lot of those programs uh, were cut short uh, because of uh, the governmental restrictions on distancing. So, uh, there has absolutely been an impact. I have not been able to go to schools. Uh, to festivals uh, or other um, um, outreach events like that. So I am basing uh, my outreach right now on these weekly webinars, uh, as well as um, I provide uh, uh, quote unquote private webinars to school groups. So if you know of any teacher or camp or uh, humane society or animal rescue, et cetera, uh, that does summer camps. Uh, I would love to provide a webinar um, on turtles uh, for those uh, students. So please email me directly, jgray at turtlesurvival.org if you have anyone you would like to recommend uh, to be the recipient of a webinar. All right, so uh, Peter Paul says, okay, talking about Kino Sternen Voti, or Voti, uh, I guess, again, I'm just uh, uh, pronouncing the uh, specific epithet the way that uh, uh, people may pronounce it, um, two different variations. Um, so uh, Peter Paul says, it's a rare, very small range. The Mexicans are working on its conservation locally. Okay. Appreciate that update on its conservation, Peter Paul. Uh, oh, you're welcome, Susan. I appreciate you coming on. It's always good to see you in uh, box turtle groups on uh, the Faces book. Um, all right, Yutsav uh, says uh, hello from India. Glad you're tuning in. And Shubham, absolutely, uh, you are welcome. Uh, I, I too hope to meet you in Lucknow. Um, I, I really hope that uh, I can visit India. Uh, I am just amazed at the work that our TSA India program uh, does uh, for the turtles of uh, that third most turtle rich country in the world, meaning they have the third most um, uh, number of species and subspecies of uh, tortoise and turtle. Uh, so it's definitely at the top of my priority list. All right, well, again, thank you all very much. Um, oh, <laughs> one last one. April Megallion says, can you give us an update on Blondie? Blondie is doing very well, uh, just as cute as ever, just as blonde as ever, um, and uh, you know, growing rapidly, uh, still having a tough time with food, uh, but, um, and, that's a kind of an inside joke. Uh, no, Blondie eats very well, but Blondie uh, uh, is, uh, misses his, uh, his live food regularly. Uh, it's it's kind of comical. Um, 
But, uh, but either way, so Blondie is a hypomelanistic ornate box turtle, Terrapini ornata ornata. If you didn't see it earlier, if you tuned in late, this is uh, what would be considered the standard phenotype of Terrapini ornata ornata, basically yellowish or um, uh, straw colored uh, striations on a black to brownish shell. Uh, this particular animal is a male uh, and his name is Geronimo. I named him Geronimo because he would basically jump off a cliff for food if he could. He is the most voracious little box turtle. All right, Destiny says, I have an old professor who is a reptile and amphibian fanatic. I'm not sure if you're referring to their age or if they were just a professor of yours in the past. A little joke there. Um, uh, and would likely love to host a webinar for one of her classes. I'll reach out. All right. Thank you so much, Destiny. I appreciate it. Can't wait to hear. And I cannot wait to educate more people. So I am going to sign off. Uh, this is Jordan Gray saying turtle knowledge is turtle power. And please tune in next week to TSA Around the World Belize. So thank you very much and goodbye.